so as a preamble to our own opinion piece. We're not trying to say that it's that simple. Um, we're not giving the opinion that basically um, a perspective of basically of strategic outcome that favors Russia would basically just be um, maintaining a de facto status quo, basically where Russia just has to continue to um, hold on to basically continue their occupation of Ukraine's territory um, with no major significant changes. Or basically, if basically Russia might seek to consolidate um, control to exercise effective control over areas it claims to have annexed. Um, so the default situation, we're not saying that basically if a de facto status quo continues, it's a Russian victory by default. Because, uh, but the reality of the situation is that what, what, you, what you're seeing is still basically actually in the Ukraine is where you have the Russian Federation exercising uh, de facto control or occupation over territories, significant parts of territories within regions that Russia claims to have annexed, you know, basically, albeit illegally. Um, but so we, we want to be as nuanced and as objective because we're trying to be objective here. So, so, so let's just back away from Ukraine for a moment. So pe people don't really, people tend to be very, uh, you know, basically the, they see only what's right in front of them. But basically in terms of history, other nations, other countries have had long dealings with the Soviet Union and Russia, long standing territorial disputes going back to the, uh, not just modern times, but going back to um basically you know before before the the present uh century basically you know basically in the dynastic times but there is in history we have to be objective in history there is um a pattern where basically one country occupies the territory of another if if the country whose territory is direct is directly occupied, over time, if that territory remains within the effective control, if not recognized by other countries, but territory that tend that that basically that becomes um, basically in history when a country loses control, fails to exercise effective control over. Uh, territories occupied by another. The longer it drags out, it tends to solidify the basically the occupation force, such as, and you can see this. So, so we're not even talking about Ukraine right now. It, you know, people, you know, have some wisdom. Basically, there's been other countries have had contested regions with Russia, and basically they've had contested re regions where that they never got back ever again from Russia. So there, there's a history beyond Ukraine, but, you know, in, in terms of, you know, basically particular countries over time, they have, they have managed to settle their, you know, historical animosities where basically, you know, basically, you know, certain countries with Russia were able to settle things amicably. So, so there's no modern day dispute. So, but we, we want to just state objectively that in terms of terror, losing if a country loses effective territorial control over a part of territory we're not necessarily talking about um manchuria but basically um it the longer an occupation force basically occupies the territory it tends to favor the occupier so it's not exactly as simple russia wins by default the longer they um, occupy Ukrainian t Ukrainian soil, um, but basically we want to point out the objective problem of history here. People who understand history well, well, way beyond, well before, hundreds of years before this whole Ukraine thing, you know, came on the scene.
the slide in this image is basically um, an American flag and a Ukraine flag on a beautiful mountain summit that we were on in the United States. But basically, we want to we want to pivot to a different topic of discussion. First, um, we remain interested in humanitarian relief and humanitarian service opportunities of a lawful, legal, and legitimate nature in compliance with national law, international law, um, all sorts of law. So, you know, basically we're interested in helping the people of Ukraine in a lawful, legal, and legitimate manner. We remain interested in helping Ukraine in a lawful and legal manner. But basically, uh, previously we did some discussions about um, different contested regions actually in the Ukraine. So again, this is a mountain summit in the United States you're looking at. But as it relates to Ukraine, we did some discussions about that. We're not really good at map ov overlays, but basically um, from the military science perspective, uh, major uh, tr major natural features can, can form uh, significant choke points where basically the existence, for example, of, of a major river system that could, depending on the deposition of forces, it could favor both offensive and war defensive operations dependent upon the position relative to significant natural choke points. So um, we've tried to discuss that in other videos, but now we want to shift to a broader picture. So n none of the nonsense in the media, we're not, we're not talking about any of the nonsense, you know, basically, you know, modernly, but basically this is, this is more of a political breakdown. So what is, in, in our opinion, Russia's gambit? Uh, this is Russia's gambit. Basically, people are, you know, in the media talking about, you know, you know, Ukraine is winning, you know, or, or Ukraine is not winning. Just divergent accounts where, you know, basically people can end up really confused, right? We want to, we want to, we want to basically break out of the mess. And this is our opinion piece here. Russia's gambit. What victory for Russia looks like is basically, this is Russia's gambit. In our opinion, the longer the war drags on, if the war drags on, and if basically, if Russia is con continues to hold basically areas, they continue to occupy areas that they, you know, basically claim to, you know, uh, annex, uh, you know, illegally. The longer the situation drags on, where in, in a situation where a, a conflict drags on and where Russia continues to hold its, um, basically continues to hold Ukraine's territory, um, in our opinion, politically in realist terms, that favors Russia. It becomes a sort of fate accompli, uh, fiat accompli, we, we messed that up, you know, pronunciation, who, 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 gives a, who gives a darn. But Basically, the longer Russia drags on the war, the longer they actually hold occupied territories that they claim to annex, it actually uh, favors Russia because it's sort of over time. Um, it, it doesn't. We're not saying it becomes like a, stat, a, a new status quo, but from from a realist political standpoint, um, in in political terms, what all Russia would have to do is basically maintain a sort of de facto status quo where they actually control regions they claim to have annexed. And this is why from political terms, we believe that, um, you know, this is our opinion. We, we believe politically, um, basically a, a longer drown out conflict actually favors Russian Federation. And we believe this could be a reason why um, it's m more in the interest of Ukraine to try to achieve some type of decisive uh, turnaround within relative short term. Um, whereas basically all Russia has to do is drag it out and basically camp and occupy um, areas that they claim to control. So time, in our opinion, is actually not necessarily on Ukraine's side. Um, and there's different um, discussions about what's happening in, in, in Bakhmut. 
you know, basically Russia attempting to close off and encircle the city. Um, different, you know, basically accounts of what's actually happening there. But um, in our opinion, that particular area, there there doesn't seem to be such a salient choke point that overwhelmingly favors one side, the defenders or the aggressors. Um, and, it, you know, it, with relative to the terrain, there is not an, there is not an obvious major choke point that overwhelmingly favors one side or the other. So, in our opinion, it's kind of like a, it's kind of crass, but basically it, it's like a measure of the capabilities of between the respective combatants in in this armed conflict. Um, so it, it is, the, the situation is basically Russia continues, in our opinion, they continue to hold large swaths of areas that they have claimed to annex. And in our, again, to recap, our, our belief is that basically the Russian objective, their gambit is basically, um, their calculations, longer it drags on, the longer they continue to occupy those territories, um, it ends up, you know, favoring, you know, give, conferring strategic advantage to Russia. Um, whereas Ukraine would like to achieve some type of decisive turnaround.